Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. Today, we are going to clean, prep, and protect the leather in the C7 Corvette. That includes the seats, center console, patches on the door panel, and dash. First thing is first, proper lighting, especially in these darker interiors, so we can see what we're doing during the prep and cleaning process. Then I'm going to grab Heaven for Leather. That is from Angel Wax. I've been using this for quite some time now and still using it. I absolutely love it, especially on leather like, like this that's really not hammered, just lightly soiled. It's excellent at removing light dirt and body oils. The way I like to use Heaven for Leather, I like to mist a little bit on the seat itself, uh, let it work its way in, break down some of the body oils, some of the lightly contaminated areas. I'll spray some into my detail brush, it's a soft detail brush, and then work it into the seat. It'll lather up really nice, as you'll see here. It is a great cleaner, a gentle cleaner, also has conditioners. I could do without that. You all know what I think about conditioners for leather. Modern leather seats have a top coat, so a conditioner will just sit on top of that top coat until you scoot your butt in there and it'll transfer back on your clothes so it's quite useless unless you have something natural like the King Ranch leather uh, edition interior now for maybe seams or stitched areas or areas on the bolster where it's wearing down a conditioner might help to keep things from cracking and drying out a bit So besides Heaven for Leather, I can give you two other leather cleaners that I really like and can recommend. Another one would be the Sonax Leather Cleaner. That is a foamer. You've seen me using that in some other videos. And also Lithium. Lithium has a nice leather cleaner. Very effective as well. I like to use this two-headed brush here, different sizes on each end, and I can get in between the seams if it's really caked in there, if something's really caked in. You want to be really gentle in those areas of the seams. You don't want to fray the stitching. That looks absolutely horrible. Pull the uh, seams apart between patches, and you could use forced air, especially if there's a lot of grit in there or some crumbs from food. You want to get that out of there because if it stays in uh, from you rooching in and out of the car, sliding in and out of the seat, uh, those two patches are going to rub together with the grit inside in between those two seams. And that is going to wear down through the top coat, down into the dye, down into the leather, and prematurely wear down the seat. So uh, cleaning them properly is, is absolutely critical before protection. And another tool I'll drag out is this one here. You see me use this uh, quite a few times. I've had this over a year. It's starting to break a little bit at the edges, break down some of the fibers coming off. But I like to get this tool out for the perforated patches in the center of the seat. I still often get asked about using a magic eraser on leather seats. So here's my look on this on absolutely hammered seats. Uh, you know, the seats are in terrible shape already, where they're even uh, a few shades darker than they should be because they're so caked with dirt. I'm going to grab into a bucket where I have three or four magic erasers that have been soaking, used, are broken down, much softer, and I will use those to just one time clean off those seats, clean off that top coat. And what I'm going to do is use a conditioner, which is useless otherwise, as a sort of like what a clay lube would do for the clay bar. Give a little bit of lubrication and cut down on marring on the top coat as the magic eraser does its work and lifts the dirt from perforated or textured leather. But that's only going to be a once and done, and then I'm going to have a long talk with the owner uh, for proper aftercare and protection, and hopefully the seats never get that bad again, because you can only use that tool on leather seats one time. 
Luckily here, the interior isn't too bad, so I can continue on with Heaven for Fur Leather. It's absolutely um, perfect and just enough for these leather seats. It's going to be gently cleaned and then pampered afterwards, so no worries there. Here's another tool for perforated seats. Uh, you have to be careful with this. You can't go jamming it in there. You just have to gently go in and give it a twist. If you have something like suntan lotion or food that fell in the, cra the, the holes or the cracks, you can use this to get in there. Gently put it in, give it a twist. As you see when I pull it out, it didn't ream out the hole and make it three times larger. It just cleaned out the dirt. Again, common sense. A lot of these tools for detailing need to be used with a bit of common sense. My choice for protection today is going to be IGL leather. It's something I favor when it comes to overall protection, durability, and the look. It gives it a nice, deep, dark, rich look if it's dark leather. But when it dries and it cures, it's going to look and feel natural. And that's important. It's going to smell natural as well. There are two that I heavily rely on here at the shop for that purpose. That's IGL here and also Gion Leather Shield, Gion Coat, and Gion Preserve. Fantastic products. As you can see here, not using uh, any type of block or applicator block, just putting the micro suede applicator itself, the sheet, in my hand, putting four or five drops on there and massaging it into the leather. As you can see, it, it makes the area glossy looking at first, but don't worry about that. If you're doing it for the first time, it's going to go on glossy for the first few minutes. It'll look like that. But as it cures, it's going to kick back and it's going to finish and it's going to cure up looking natural. It's going to feel natural. And in most cases, if you pick the right coating, it'll smell natural as well. I often get asked about the perforated patches both in the uh, base of the seat here and then in the backrest where air circulates. Yeah, you can absolutely coat and protect them as well. The coating will not clog those pores. All right, that was a quick overview of the coating. Let me give you a first-person look so you can see what it looks like as it's going on. Again, a, a bit scary at first if it's your first time doing a coating for leather as it goes on glossy and you're thinking, whoa, is it going to cure like this? Is my seat going to stay like this? Because I definitely wouldn't want that. I don't like the glossy look anywhere on an interior. But don't worry, again, it does cure looking natural. Something else to look for in leather seats, doesn't matter what color. On the, the base of the seat there, right in the middle of the perforated patches, you're going to see uh, like a large circle, a two by two foot circle. That is a telltale sign that something hot like hot chocolate or coffee or latte spilled in there. And it changes, actually changes the, the, the texture and the feel of, of the leather. That heat is heavily damaging to the, the leather top coat and the leather and dye underneath. Uh, thank goodness the, the coating, if you put a couple la layers of the coating, it does blend that in and it's really hard to see then unless you're out in natural sunlight and at the perfect angle but if you ever see that and right there's a good a good angle of that right now uh, that's exactly what that is something hot spilled on there and, and really damaged the top coat the leather and the dye The first coat of the seat has been applied. Normally for me, it's going to be two coats of whatever leather I'm working on. So that's going to cure. That's the first few seconds if we ha as we have it applied. I let it cure overnight uh, before somebody gets in the car. I uh, definitely don't want to send it out any sooner than that. So let me fly around the rest of the car and we can see the finished product.
That's going to do it for today's video. We still have the plastic, some of the carbon fiber trim uh, to take care of yet, uh, but I'll take care of that in another video. Until then, if you're liking the content, like, subscribe, share the content, hit that notification bell. That'll let you know when we have new videos.